The ABS stats are in for the end of May 2022, five months of this year. The ABS stats for provisional all-cause mortality. The data showing how many people have died in this country for all causes for the first five months. And the figure? The increase over the last four years average benchmark is 16.6%. That's 16.6% increase. Just for context, actuaries allow for about a 25 3%, 3% maybe 3.5% variation year to year. They plan that because that's their business. What do we have? 16.6%. That's an incredibly big increase in all-cause mortality. That's also about the same as Spain, which we'll see in a moment. So this is the first five months of this year compared to the four years averaged. But here's the thing. The increases in deaths are happening not just in older people, but also in younger people of working age. So working age people, 25, 30, 40, 50 years old, who are in the prime of their life, reasonably fit, and should be producing and having families and going on holidays and buying homes and whatever, being economically active and contributing and productive, well, they're dying. So this is a real concern, and it's a point that's not being picked up by many people. So we need to track this very carefully. We'll have a look now at a, a report from GB News where they're looking at Northern America and also Europe in terms of what's happening there. So that gives us some broader context to compare our stats with what's happening in other parts of the world. So all-cause mortality looks at all causes, the reasons, irregardless, regardless of whether it's uh, from diabetes or heart or stroke or whatever, it's all-cause mortality. In Australia, 16.6%. But the trend line, and here's the really interesting thing, the trend line is heading north. Take a look at this. The trend line going north. So what will it be at the end of June, July, August? Does it keep going? It's certainly heading that way. So we need to keep an eye on this, but the economic impacts, the social and community impacts will be quite significant. So let's take a look now at what's happening in the US and then also in Europe with this report from GB News. Thing to see here, on Sunday, mountain biker Rab Wardell won the Scottish Cross Country Championship, the National Championship. On Monday, the champ went on BBC Scotland to talk about his victory. Talk me through it then. How do you contend with three punctures in a race like this and go on to lift oh. the gold medal? Unfortunately, I'm a probably a little bit too too well practiced in managing <laughs> punctures but uh no it was a uh, yeah it was it was uh to be honest it was a bit of a disaster but no i just just had to, to, to keep on trucking and, and keep racing and i guess still felt confident that i'd be able to to catch the leaders and and win so yeah just give them my best shot so a tremendous come from behind win on the Sunday. On the Monday, he's on the BBC talking about it, full of life there. Then he goes home and dies. Headline from the Daily Record, mountain biker Rab Wardell dies just two days after winning Scottish Championship. He went into cardiac arrest on Tuesday morning, less than 48 hours after winning a national championship. His poor, devastated girlfriend, Commonwealth Games and Olympics champion, Katie Archibald, uh, tried to revive him, but she was unable to, as she subsequently tweeted. I still don't understand what's happened. If this is real, why he'd be taken now so healthy and happy. Rab Wardell was 37, which is no age to die. Nothing to see here in cycling and nothing to see here in rugby from the Huddersfield Daily Examiner. Tributes to Halifax rugby player Ben Ben, who has died suddenly, aged 30. Ben Ben from Siddle died suddenly on Monday, leaving his family and friends completely shocked. The 30-year-old dad played competitive rugby for a host of local league and union teams, including Huddersfield Giants and Bradford Bulls. Nothing to see here in rugby, nothing to see here in cycling, nothing to see here in football. Uh, from the Daily Mirror, quote, tributes have poured in 
after the sudden death of West Belfast footballer Molly White. Uh, Molly White was 20 and a rising star in women's football. Uh, nothing to see here in boxing. Also from the Belfast Telegraph, a young boxer who passed away suddenly had an infectious smile and kind-hearted nature. His West Belfast club said St. Michael's Boxing Club led tributes to 19-year-old Dominic Oscar after his death last Thursday. Nothing to see here in cycling, rugby, football, boxing, 37 years old, 30 years old, 20 years old, 19. Fit, healthy, in the peak of condition, and dead. But nothing to see here. A few months ago I thought there might be something to see here in all these sportsmen suddenly dying and I'm being investigated by Ofcom over it so I certainly wouldn't want to make that mistake again. Nevertheless, as we've reported, in the Canadian province of Alberta the leading cause of death is not cancer or dementia but cause unknown. Uh, death from unknown causes. This was uh, how it's, you see the way, it was just 500 in 2019. Two years later, it's three and a half thousand. Cause unknown is now spreading to other provinces, including my own native Sod, Ontario. On Saturday, Rhea Vernort from Hamilton was jet skiing on Lake Ontario with old friends she hadn't seen since the COVID came along. The friends turned away and then looked back and saw Ms. Van Oort's body floating in the lake, also sudden death. She was 32 and a paramedic, which I mentioned because it means certain things can be inferred. She leaves a six-year-old daughter. But just pause here for a second, because he's been giving us anecdotes, stories, individual stories. You know, that's interesting from a news point of view, that doesn't really tell us what's going on. Let's zoom out now and take a look at how he layers up this data from official data stats in North America and also in Europe. Okay, let's move from the case studies to the big picture. Here is a table from a new report. I expect you're wondering who it's by, some crazy far-right QAnon conspiracy theorist? No, it's the US Society of Actuaries, an actuary for the benefit of you Twitter trolls, is a person who calculates insurance risk. And if you don't do that accurately, you wind up paying out a lot more money than you ever intended to. So let's look at Table 5.7 from the Society of Actuaries showing excess deaths in America broken down by age. Focus on that uh, red bit. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. At the left-hand side of the table from 2020, the spring and summer of COVID, it's not good. You can see excess deaths of 15 and 16 percent. Thank goodness all those vaccines came along. Eh? But then look at the third quarter of 2021. Twice as many dead 35 to 44 year olds as there should be. Uh, and actually almost as lousy numbers for those in their late 20s and early 50s. So look at that, excess mortality for 25 to 54-year-olds, young and middle-aged Americans. Anything going on in the third quarter of 2021? Well, that was actually the peak of vaccine mandates in America, uh, where in a variety of occupations, from paramedics uh, to Manhattan waitresses in diners, you had to get jabbed to keep your job. And oddly enough, that coincides with massive excess mortality among people in the prime of life. But all together now, correlation is not causation. That's the dispositive line there. OK, we've seen a similar picture in the European Union. Here's the latest report from Eurostat. They're keeping it simple uh, here. The pale yellow is for countries with the lowest excess deaths. Uh, so that's like Hungary, where deaths are actually down, 0.3%. Uh, Slovakia, deaths are down 1.9%. Bulgaria, 7.9%. So Bulgaria's got a, the opposite problem from most places. It's got excess life. Uh, you'll scan the Bulgar papers in vain for sudden death from cause unknown. Whereas that dark maroon there... Those are the worst countries with excess mortality over 15%. Estonia, 16.2%. Spain, 16.7%. Portugal, excess mortality of 23.9%. More dead bodies than usual. I'll tell you what, just for fun, boys and girls, let's also take a look at vaccination rates in Europe. 
Uh, this is the uh, rundown of countries. So look at that. The least vaccinated country in Europe is Bulgaria. And they also have the least excess mortality. Hmm. And the most vaccinated country in Europe is Malta, which isn't included in the excess mortality stats. So let's go to the second most vaccinated country in Europe, Portugal. And they have the highest excess mortality in Europe. So the lowest country with the lowest vaccination rate has the lowest excess mortality. And the country with the highest vaccination rate has the highest excess mortality. But altogether... What does this really mean? As I said before, impacts on community, but also on families and also on supply chain, labour supply. Qantas recently reporting that they've got these long... Uh, illnesses in their staff and absenteeism really impacting their baggage handling, their flight crews. That's just one example, but it might mean that people, if they're not sick and able to work, but they're also dying, as the data is now indicating, you can't get a plumber, you can't get uh, a school teacher, and so on. So this is going to be something that really needs some attention from the policy makers and also the, the state and federal leaders, because this is going to bite. Thanks for watching.